Hey everybody, welcome to today's video. If you're new here, my name's Caitlin. I'm Jared. And we are the Galloway Farm. We've had a bunch of new subscribers since our first upload, so we figured to get to know us a little bit better, we would do a question and answer session for you guys. I asked you guys to ask us some questions over on Instagram, and we got a few, so we're gonna answer those. Um, the first question is, how did you get into farming? So, for me, I kind of grew up with this lifestyle. Um, big garden, chickens, ducks, things like that. So it's kind of just what I've always known. And when Jared and I got married, we moved to a subdivision and we couldn't do any of that. We were on a quarter of an acre. So it was like culture shock to me. <laughs> so I really just wanted to get back to my roots and just do what I've always loved and enjoyed. Growing up, you know, we had this huge garden. My dad had all these vegetables. My mom would cook anything he grew. And growing up, I learned that not everyone has a garden. Some people do get their vegetables from the grocery store, which was just amazing to me. So I really just wanted to get back to that. So I got into farming because I basically married into it. So growing up, I lived in uh, kind of a subdivision. I guess you'd say we had two lots, but we didn't grow a garden or anything like that. I did have uh, grandparents who all did some form or fashion of gardening, but never really any livestock there was never any uh, hogs or cattle or um, some of them had chickens and things like that but, but they were all small animals and so I, it just fascinated me um, Mary and Caitlin uh, she grew up on a, around 12 acres and so uh, I, I always wanted to have some land of my own and to be able to do different things with it and so when we found this place and it had some of the basic infrastructure that we needed it just really seemed like the perfect way to launch ourselves into it uh, I have a passion for the animal side of things. I really like the husbandry of it, seeing the different animals and, and what you can do to take care for them and how they in return will take care of you. And that's always fascinated me, even, even from a young age. So that's kind of where, where I got into it. Next question, your favorite animals and plants. This one's a hard, for, hard one for me because I love animals. Um, I love different things about all the animals. I love ducks, so that's probably gonna be my first one. The goats, they are a close second, even though we just got them, I love them. I'll come out here and just sit in their pen. They're so much fun to be around. Um, and then Hank, our pig, he's a pot belly. I just think he's so much fun. He doesn't really provide us with anything but entertainment, um, but I do love him. <laughs> and as far as the plants go, I love growing herbs just because they're so easy and so versatile. You can pretty much do a lot more with herbs than you can flowers or vegetables. Um, I do love flowers and how beautiful they are and vegetables, of course, who doesn't love those? Um, but I think herbs would have to be my top plant to grow. So for me, as far as the animals go, when we started the homestead, we started small and got our flock of 12 hens. They're all barred rock hens. You've seen them in our videos. And for me, that would probably be my favorite. When we got the homestead, it came with Hank and he was more of a pet than he was. Uh, he, he didn't really have a job around the farm. We joked around that he was like the, the outside, the operations manager. But for us, for me in particular, it was the chickens because that was the first animals that that we raised and that we were able to see uh, uh, produce come from. And so we've, we've actually sold their eggs. We've eaten a lot of their eggs. And so for me, that would probably be my favorite animals. However, I will say like Caitlin, I do find myself out here since we've gotten the goats, actually just coming in and sitting in the goat pen. As far as the plants go, uh, we don't really have that many plants. We've got some cut flowers and we have a small herb garden, but we haven't really produced a large garden yet so I think as far as our plants go it would have to be the blueberries our little girl absolutely loves blueberries she loves to run over to them blueberries, blueberries. blueberries. <laughs> and so um, I really love that about them and the joy that it brings her brings me joy so I think that would kind of have to be my favorite plant on our homestead next question how can you afford to live this life it's my end goal and my dream what do I have to do so I think the biggest thing with that is you have to be very intentional with your money, yeah. with your spending. Um, the, the way that I looked at it when we first knew that this is what we wanted to do, when we still lived in the subdivision and we knew that one day we wanted to buy land and build a house or buy a house um, with some land, I started looking at things a lot differently. Um, I stopped spending as much money on clothes. I just started buying like basics and then just wearing those. I wouldn't buy the latest trends. 
Um, I completely cut out Bath and Body Works. I love their candles and their soap. Done. <laughs> um, just get the 96 cent soap at Walmart. I mean, <laughs> it's fine. Um, and then other things, just not going out as much, not going out to eat as much. Um, of course, you want to do activities with your family and go do things with them, but just do small activities. Just try and save money where you can. Um, and then look into reusing things. So like one thing I did was instead of buying plastic Ziploc bags, I got some silicone bags and they're reusable. You just wash them. Just look for small little things like that. They can make a difference. And then also a big thing with that is do what you can where you can. So I don't know where you live, if it's an apartment and you have a little balcony, try and grow herbs on that or even a small vegetable garden there. Um, go to a farmer's market and you can try to preserve the vegetables you get from there. Just start small and work your way up. And if it's truly your goal, keep that in the back of your mind and always work on that. Never give up on that dream. So. I think the, the biggest thing for us is we were very intentional about setting goals and about attaining those goals. So I, I, I said it was the set and save principle. We wanted to set our goals and then we wanted to save to fulfill those goals. And what that meant was we were putting aside money constantly to accomplish this. We also, when we bought that home in the subdivision, when we bought that, we knew that that was just going to be our starter home and that we were going to see a significant return on investment. And that's one of the things that, that I've tried to live by, a principle that I've always tried to, to govern with, and that is to buy things or invest in things that are going to give you an investment in the future. So that home, we bought it, and then when we turned around and sold it in less than three years, we made uh, essentially 33% profit we were able to put directly into our pockets which help us come and, and buy 25 acres that already had a house on it, already had a shed on it, already had infrastructure for animals. We could move our dogs directly in and things like that. So I would say definitely set goals and save and, and be uh, intentional to use the word that Caitlin used about the way that you invest your money and, and what you put your time in. It's not just money but also in where you put your time. It would be very easy for us to sit on the couch and to watch Netflix and to watch or catch up with the latest uh, news or TV shows or whatever it is, but instead we're constantly learning, we're constantly reading and trying to move our homestead in a forward direction. If you see me look over here, I'm watching the goats. They're doing some crazy stuff, that's why. <laughs> Next question is um, if we'll do a property slash coop tour. Um, we'll probably do that in the future. We have a lot more plans for what we want to do. So it may be like after we get those plans in place. Um, I do have a coop, it's kind of like a coop tour. It's where I clean out the whole entire chicken coop on our channel. So I'll link that above and you could go check that out. Our next question is how do you do this and work full time? So it's very hard, but yeah. <laughs> it's very important to structure and organize your time. So you set a time for morning chores, you set a time for evening chores, you may have to get up a little bit earlier, you may have to go to bed a little bit later than you want. But it's very important to structure your time. We do have a daughter, so when you add in kids, it can be a little bit more difficult as well. So you have to structure your time even more. So um, getting things done during naps or when she goes down for bed, just try not to sit idle because uh, you always want to be moving forward. Thankfully though, if we do need a full day to get things done, like when we did our meat chickens, we had a whole day we dedicated to butchering the meat chickens. So, <laughs> hey Michael Jordan. So um, we have family members that will help us with that. So I'd say support is important too. So the first thing I would say to answer that question is you, you have to enjoy what you're doing. Uh, if you don't enjoy this type of lifestyle, then you're going to be miserable in it and you're going to quit in it because it is a lot of manual labor. It is a lot of getting up early in the mornings and sometimes especially like when our goats are kidding or when you have chicks that you have to take care of, um, it, it can be an around the clock thing. Secondly, I would say rest. Uh, I know that that may sound Easier cliche. Easier said than done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean it, it may sound cliche, it may sound simple but you definitely need to appropriate times to rest. When Caitlin's talking about organizing a schedule and getting a set schedule, I actually on my schedule planner have days, time periods set off specifically for rest because if you're not resting, then you're not gonna be working at your, your peak when it does come time. 
Um, next question, where do you see your homestead in five years? So my biggest thing in five years, I want to be closer to being more self-sustainable. We definitely want to have a large vegetable garden by then. Um, of course, we want to keep doing the meat chickens. Just getting closer and closer to not relying on the grocery store or um, just the big chain companies. What I also want to happen in five years is to have different forms of income. And what I mean by that is now we sell chicken eggs, um, duck eggs, and we um, sell our meat chickens that we butchered. So in the future, we want to um, get involved in different forms of making income. And that could be through the goat milk, different things with that. Um, animals selling their kids things like that um, and then also of course we want to grow our youtube channel to help share information to um, just document this for ourselves as well um, this is so much fun and i think it'll be uh, great to look back on one day and we love sharing it with you too in five years it's it's hard to look out on the horizon i know where we'd like to be in five years but just like we never thought that we would get goats as soon as we did when an opportunity presented itself um, we're very opportunistic and we've been very fortunate and very blessed in what we do have and, and the opportunities that have presented themselves. Uh, one of the things that I would like to do is use the animals for their own purposes. And what I mean by that, like with the goats, when we did our goat video, you heard me say that we wanted to use them to kind of clear back some of the brush. Well, they love doing that. That's feeding them. They enjoy it, but it's also serving our purpose of helping us clear the land. Yeah, it may take a little bit slower than going and swinging an ax or going and burning some stuff off, but at the same time, it's helping them and helping us at the same time. So I'd like to get some different animals like that and use them for a different purpose. Also, what I would love to see is a larger income coming off of our farm, as Caitlin said, diversify the different streams of income, uh, whatever that may look like in the future. Right now, we, you know, we have the eggs, we have chickens, uh, we're making our first batches of goat milk soap, uh, we're, we're looking at doing lotions and creams and things like that. So diversifying those streams of income and hopefully um, making it so that eventually we can work from our home uh, obviously we'd love to grow the youtube channel and things like that but we would love to to be here on the farm uh, raising our daughter raising our family and and making money off of the land and using it for for that purpose so that's that's where i'd like to be in five years we'll see what happens when we get there we'll see <laughs> um next question what do you like most about homesteading for me it's definitely the animals i've always loved animals i've always wanted animals um we just got goats and i am on cloud nine i love it so much so hands down um the animals are the best part for me i also just love how it connects you closer with nature since we moved out here i don't like tv i hate sitting on the couch and watching tv every now and then i'll watch something but i'd rather be outside just sitting in the goat pen or just sitting somewhere on our property just enjoying nature i don't care about going out and doing all these things i'd much rather just be at home enjoying our farm our family um just taking it all in so i i think i have to side with caitlin on this one the animals by far are the most fun uh, for me, when we add a new animal to the homestead, there's a lot of research that goes into it. It's not just willy-nilly. Like The goats happen quickly, but we've been looking at goats since we moved out here. Um, so, so we do a lot of research all along the way, and it's so rewarding when you're able to add something new to your homestead, and it, it accompl accomplishes that symbiotic relationship where they're working for you and you're working for them. And, and to me, that's really entertaining. Uh, also, the reward that comes from it. You know, when it comes time to build a, a goat enclosure or something like that, or when Caitlin has a wild idea to build a compost, a two, two barreled compost bin out of pallets, uh, to, to see the end product. Yeah, it may have been frustrating when we were going through the process, but to step back and look at it and say, wow, that was a really great idea and it accomplished a great purpose for us. I think that's really rewarding as well. One of the things that I love is our families think we're crazy uh, sometimes. Mostly when we, yours. <laughs> mostly mine. When we, when we do things and when we add things to the farm so quickly, uh, it seems like every time they come out to the farm, we have something new going on. We just added seven new chicks. We just added mm, five new goats. I don't know. My mom thinks I'm pretty crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, it's kind of fun too to, to see what everybody else thinks about it as well. Yeah. We don't concern ourselves in that so much. 
Uh, I mean, it's it's fun to look I think at. I it's fun. <laughs> but at the same time, it, you know, we're, we're going to do what we want to do. Um, yeah. And we're going to have fun while we do it. And, and that's the big thing is it's just fun on the homestead. To, to be able to raise a little girl yeah, if on this homestead is great. If we didn't enjoy it, we wouldn't do it. Right. So that's why we do it. Um, next question. How much work is involved in homesteading? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> there's morning chores, there's evening chores, and then there's extracurricular things like cleaning out the chicken coop, um, cleaning the duck house, scooping poop, all kinds of things. Just constantly. As soon as you check one thing off your to-do list, you're adding two more things back on. Like it's never ending. But like we've been saying this whole video, we love it. We enjoy it. So we don't really mind it. Um, just know if you get involved in this, you are never going to be sitting idle or have a moment of downtime. Also, if an animal is injured, you have to drop everything. You have to take the time. You have to use resources to take care of that. We just had a duck that developed bumblefoot. Um, and each night we're going to catch it in the duck house. Yeah. We're going to, um, I had to perform surgery on it and cut out the infection. So I'm having to redress that wound. So it's a lot. So you have to be willing to just be selfless and go take care of your farm. And then also you're always learning new skills, which I enjoy, but Definitely. There's so many new skills to learn, whether it's building something, taking care of the animals, cooking from scratch, making bread, um, preserving food, growing herbs, growing vegetables. I mean, there's always a new skill to learn, and I thrive on that. I love learning new skills. So that's probably one of my favorite things living out here, too. But learning those skills, it does take time and effort, and it is a lot of work. So as far as the work is involved, it is a lot of manual labor. You know, there is some thinking and some pre-planning that goes into it, but the majority of it is manual labor. And because of that, you're going to be at the mercy of the elements a lot of time. If it's hot, if it's cold, if it's raining, you're going to have to kind of schedule yourself around that. Fortunately, uh, currently I'm a pastor. I work from home, so I'm able to kind of plan my schedule uh, around that. I can do a lot of my sitting stuff, my downtime stuff when it's not as great weather outside. That's another thing is when it's really hot outside or when it's pouring rain, you still have to come outside and you still have to do what you need to do. Hurricanes, yeah. uh, for, for us, hurricanes, tornadoes, things like that that, that come up, you, you know, you still have to upkeep this place. And that's another big one is, is upkeep, as well as the upkeep of what we have around here. A lot of mowing, a lot of weed eating, trimming, and things like that that a lot of people don't think about when it comes time for setting up a homestead. You still are going to need time for that. But again, I go back to a point that I made earlier. You need to rest. You do need to have time set in your schedule where you rest and, and you set aside time to wind down, to come sit with the goats, to hang out with the goats, and just relax. Um, with a one-year-old, it's a little bit more difficult now on us, but... Uh, we wouldn't trade her. There, there are a lot of times when we're able to rest with her, but she can be a handful sometimes. And you know, to incorporate that family time and to do family chores together and stuff like that. Yeah, it's nice to watch the world and the animals through her eyes yes. because sometimes it can get a little mundane and it's fun to just watch her get so excited over feeding the chickens or she loves to give the ducks mealworms. Yeah. So as soon as she sees the bag, she'll say mealworms and she loves it. So it's fun to see it all through her eyes. The, the only one year old I know that gets super <laughs> excited about mealworm. Yes. And the last thing I'll say about how much work goes into the homesteading is focus on the what's now instead of on the what's if or what ifs that are to come. Uh, it, it's great to organize and it's great to plan and it's great to focus on a future. But like I said, the majority of our homesteading journey so far has come up with great opportunities that we seized in the moment. Yes, we were planning on having goats maybe sometime in 2022, but when the opportunity presented itself, we were able to get a small herd for a great price. We could not pass up on that. Because we had saved and set goals, we were able to go ahead and, and put that money to use and go ahead and build everything. So uh, focus on the what's now and the opportunities that are presenting themselves in this moment and seize those and worry about the what ifs later on down the road. It's great to have plans and that's why I'm, I'm so thankful that I have Caitlin because she is a planner <laughs> and organizer, but I am all about jumping on those opportunities when they present themselves and, and together that makes a good balance. That is kind of what's tough for me too is even though I love to plan, not everything's going to go to plan. And a lot of the times it's just rolling with the punches and just getting through the moment. But Most things on a homestead do not go to plan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's all our questions. So this will be it for this video. If you have questions that we did not answer, feel free to drop them in the comments. If you enjoyed this kind of sit down and chat type video, 
give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. We've got a lot of fun things coming in the future. So we'll see you in the next video and we hope you enjoyed. And thank you to everyone who left our questions and yes, we got to thank answer you. them. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is the Galloway Farm. If you're I don't know what I was going where, where I was going with that. Uh, what do you think? I didn't know that was gonna be the segue. This goat is eating my shirt. <laughs> He's so cute. You're shining that in my eyes. Oh sorry. <laughs> That's fine. Shadows of the morning are crawling on my floor when I just wanna lie here.